12 people we've got. Jack, Sarah, Charlotte, Emily, Kathleen, Maisie, Brianna, Carly, Michael, Augustine, Don, Toby, Aiden, and Jane. Today is the day that you are saying yes. The question is, yes to what? You're choosing to be a Christian, yes. But to be anything, you have to do something. So what does a Christian do? Walk humbly, love kindness, seek justice, that's the prophet Isaiah. Love God and love your neighbor. That's Jesus, also the Jewish Torah. Be always joyful. Pray continually. That's Paul. And there's a long list you could probably add to it. But that list could probably be boiled down to follow Jesus. It turns out Jesus had a lot to say about faithful living. For example, that day that the religious scholar, who was a bit of a know-it-all, asked Jesus what he had to do to be a good Jew. And you remember how Jesus answered? He said, once upon a time, a man was walking down a road between Jerusalem and Jericho, and he was mugged. He was stripped, all of his belongings were taken from him, and he was left in a ditch at the side of the road. And a little later, another Jewish man came by, a priest, actually. But he went by on the other side. Right. He probably worried that those robbers were hiding somewhere nearby, or maybe the man in the ditch was a robber himself. And off he went. Another religious official came along, but he also went by on the other side, right? He had an appointment, he was going to be late, and he had people that were waiting for him. And then along came a Samaritan. Now, Samaritans and Jews hated each other. They were like the Capulets and the Montagues. Romeo and Juliet? Anyone? Anyone? All right. Or like the sharks and the jets. West Side Story. Okay. So it had to have been a complete shock to that guy in the ditch when he opened his eyes and looked up to see this Samaritan. And he might have bolted if he didn't feel like he'd just been hit by a Mack truck. Instead, he let the man give him water and bind up his wounds and put him on his donkey and take him off to the nearest inn to recover. And the innkeeper may have been just as shocked to see these two guys hanging out together. Imagine a Catholic and a Protestant spending time together in Northern Ireland. Or a civil rights leader buying lunch for a white supremacist as they sat together at the counter. Imagine an Israeli soldier tending to a Palestinian boy who's thrown rocks at him earlier that same day. Or a transgender woman stepping in to help a man who just voted to keep her out of the woman's bathroom because she was born anatomically male. You get the picture, right? You could probably come up with other examples. I'm sure that you could. See, the thing is, it turns out that saying yes to Jesus doesn't just mean being nice or helpful, although that's a good start. It means reaching out to, maybe even accepting help from, the people that we may regard as our enemies. It means recognizing that they, too, are human, more than that, that they are children of God. This is the kind of challenging stuff that Jesus asks all of us to do. So it is no small thing what you're doing today. This is not a small yes. 
This is an audacious yes. This is a risky, bold yes. It is a brave yes. It's the kind of decision that maybe ought to make us, all of us, shake in our shoes a little bit. Because who knows where Jesus is going to lead us. Except that there's this. Long before you said yes to Jesus, long before parents, step-parents, guardians, godparents, grandparents said yes for you at your baptism, God said yes to you. You could say that you, we, all of us are marked by an invisible mark, like a holy thumbprint in the middle of your forehead, or maybe on your heart. A mark that means you are a beloved child. You and you and you and you and you and you and you. And we're not just marked. We're also sent. Go and do likewise, Jesus told that know-it-all religious scholar. On Pentecost, which we celebrated just a few weeks back, God fills us with Holy Spirit power, supercharges us to go out and to share God's love. So we aren't just Jesus followers. We're also doers, leaders, teachers, healers, spreader of love and hope. You're already doing that. The mentors are introduced to you have already named the ways that you are bringing your gifts to bear on the church and on the world. It's our task, all of ours, as Christians. And each of us will do it in our own way. That was the point of story time, right, Michael? Right? That we all, all of us, have a call not just David, who got to be king, but every one of David's siblings had something to offer, and so do you. So today, as you say yes, even if you don't know everything that you're saying yes to, and none of us ever does, here's what I hope for you and what I promise. I hope that you realize how brave you are and how loved by God and by this community of faith. I hope you stay curious, that you keep asking all your hard questions and that you will always find people willing to wrestle with those questions with you. Especially here at Sagatuck Church, but not just here all along the way. And I hope you always find what you need to keep saying yes, to live and love boldly each other and all of those people that God might send your way. That's what I hope. And here's what I promise. I promise to follow Jesus with you. If you keep showing up, I and we will hang out with you. Can I get an amen? Amen. I promise to take your questions seriously and to support you in figuring out where Jesus is calling you. In a few minutes, I'm going to seal that promise with oil when I pray a blessing on each one of you. And here's something else I learned during Story Tent this year. <laughs> that when the prophet anointed David. You remember how he did that in the middle of the, of the play to declare that David would be king? Samuel wasn't just saying, you're the one. He was also saying, I'll go with you. We're in this together, all of us. And I do believe that Jesus is cheering us on every step of the way. For that I say, thanks be to God. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.